we are privileged to have both, uh, well, we're privileged to have Colin Johnson, yeah? <laughs> and then, unfortunately, Dan tags along. But yeah, we are privileged to have Dan. I mean, um, when we make these kind of bad jokes, it's because we know each other too well. And then we start making these kind of bad jokes in public. And then people say, oh, do you, do you have a problem with each other? And I know. We just know each other well. So anyway, um, so we are here, um, joint event, um, Linaja London, but also is the, the first event of Pro Bank community, uh, Meta Groups. So we, we thought that wh who else could it be, the, who else could it be the better choice than having both Colin and Dan to, to talk about like an introduction to, to Pro Kanban and what, what it's, what's it all about, this community, all, all this initiative. All right. So like Jose said, we're going to mute everybody for people coming in. But if you do have questions at any point, you can add them to the chat and Jose can can yell them out at us um, as we go. This is pretty informal. We just want to tease this as an opportunity to introduce everybody to ProConban.org and what we're trying to build here with this, this new community. Um, so my name is Colleen Johnson, as Jose said, I'm the CEO of ProConban.org. I'm super excited about this role, but mostly took it so I could boss Dan around. Um, I'm also the CEO of Scatterspoke.com, which is an online a tool for online retrospectives. I've been in the Kanban world teaching and coaching teams for um, the last 10 years and in the IT space for over 20. Um, I've been active in Agile Denver on the Agile Denver Board of Directors. Um, through Mile High Agile conferences for the last couple of years, and more recently with Agile Uprising on the board of directors. I'll kick it over to you, Dan. Oh, I have to introduce myself? Um, honestly, <laughs> probably the, really the only interesting thing, I don't know if this is interesting or not, but I, I, I ran for president this year. And this was, my, this was my wife's first year of being able to vote in a presidential election. Um, she decided to become a citizen after the depending on your political persuasion, the debacle of 2016. Um, so she's like, oh, there's no way I'm, I'm voting. I'm not voting in an American election ever again. So I, I ran this year and I've run every year since 2000, 2004. I can't remember. Can you believe my wife did not vote for me? Can you believe this? She did not vote for me. It's the only time. So that's the only interesting thing I really have to say about myself is, is uh, that's it. Did she vote for Kanye? <laughs> No, no, but <laughs> only Kanye voted for Kanye. Yeah, and Biden. Interestingly enough, Biden wouldn't take my call when I called to concede. Yeah, that was um, I thought that was fairly ungracious of him. But anyway. All right. Let's see. All right. So the first thing we want to start with is saying, you know, kind of in a similar vein of what you may have heard from an open space perspective, that if you are here and you are interested in what we're doing and what this means, then you belong in this group. Um, it's really important to us that we're building a very inclusive community, that we're welcoming all different um, experience levels. Even if you've never really heard of Kanban at all, we want you here. We want to help um, share our experience, share our knowledge, and bring everyone along for that ride. So um, we're going to walk through a couple of different things here around our, our community and our code of conduct and what it means to be a member of the Pro Kanban community. But if you are interested in being a part of this, there is a seat for you at this table, a seat for everyone at this table. So we're happy that you are here. Um, so what is Pro Kanban? Um, this is Dan's words. I'm going to steal them here because I really liked the way that Dan worded this. Um, but it's a community that recognizes that no single methodology or framework has a monopoly on all the right answers where bridges can be built so we can all learn together. And um, I'm sure it's no surprise to anyone here that there is there can be a lot of friction, you know, in Scrum versus Kanban and Kanban versus Kanban. <laughs> um, and we want to really chip away at that. So we wanna really make a community here where um, we can recognize the things that have been successful, whether they have a name or don't have a name and fold those into what we know um, and, and learn together. Um, and what's really important about what we're trying to build is that this is gonna be fluid and things are gonna change. So we're gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the Kanban guides, the, the Kanban guide that's available um, on kanbanguide.org, is that right? Do I have that right? And on um, linked from prokanban.org. Um, but even that is going to change over time. And we're going to incorporate feedback from the members of the community into that um, kind of learning and adapting as we go as well. Anything you want to add to that, Dan? No, no, I, th I think you've nailed it. That's absolutely right. So what will this community offer for you? 
Um, we've got a few things. So the first here is um, courses. So if you've looked on the on the site recently, you'll see that we have our first course, which is Applying Professional Kanban. Um, and this, the format of this course will vary slightly depending on how it's offered. It's all virtual right now. Um, and we hope very soon that we can have in-person classes again, but it's just going to vary from location to location. Um, so the courses are posted and we'll show you some of those upcoming classes at the end here um, with some options for um, some of the lovely trainers that are also on this call. Um, and along those lines, there's also a path to becoming a Pro Kanban trainer. So if you are interested in teaching classes, um, we are still working through this. So just like everything else, this is very new and we're learning from everybody that's going through the process what's working and not working and kind of adapting it as we go but we do have an official path now to becoming a pro Kanban trainer. If you are interested in becoming a trainer, you can reach out to support at ProKanban.org. Um, I will say that we're trying to be thoughtful of not um, flooding the market with trainers up front until we can prove that there's value and interest in these classes. So we're trying to do um, small batches, small batch sizes of our trainers out in the market so that we can test things and learn and um, really be thoughtful in how we're rolling this out. Also on the ProCombine site, we've got our open assessment. Um, and that has been, I don't know, Dan, do we have any numbers for how many people have hit that yet? I mean, it's the number of people who've taken the open assessment is in the hundreds. I think it was four to 500 last time I checked. Um, so, I mean, the, the open assessment is fairly popular right now. Um, probably mostly because it's, it's free. Anybody can show up and take it. You don't have to register. You don't, you don't have to give us username, email address, anything. You just go and take it and, and test your knowledge. Yeah, and I think that's been um, a good path for folks that are interested in the certification assessment. And what's cool about the assessment is that it's standalone. I know that that's, that varies from organization to organization. And we've taken the route of having the assessment be separate from the course so that people can choose to study on their own and um, review the resources and the guide from the site and then take that certification assessment without having taken a course. Um, of course, if you do take a, one of the classes, you'll have the option to take the assessment at the end of that as well. Um, and we've been really encouraging folks that are interested in the certification to um, review all of these materials and then run through that open assessment as many times as you'd like to really see what areas you need to focus on and, and continue to review. Um, and then the last thing here is a community. So all of this stuff is great. The assessment's great. The courses are great. Um, the common guide is amazing to have. But what we really want to offer everyone is a, a safe space to connect and to ask questions and to learn together. And I had shared with with um, Dan in the past that I've been member a member of other agile communities where uh, you know I've 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 doubted my own experience in asking questions or even answering other people's questions because I didn't want to get shot down or told that it was a stupid question <laughs> or stupid, stupid answer, even worse. Um, so I, what we really want to do with this community is make sure that we are um, making, it, making it a place where anybody in any experience level can come in and ask those questions um, and connect with different people with different skill sets and different experience levels and um, really feel welcomed and, and comfortable. Anything you want to add to that, Dan? No, I, 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 think you, I think you got it. Cool. All right, so um, I feel like we need to address this because I, I have been pretty outspoken about feeling like there's a lot of Agile certifications in the industry, and there are, there really are. Um, so why did we feel the need to offer uh, another brand new certification here? Um, currently, there's no other existing Kanban um, certification out there that, that includes an assessment of your knowledge. And so we felt like it was really important to provide a way to um, test what you know and kind of prove what you know from a Kanban perspective. Um, and this helps really, this helps you. Um, this provides, uh, you know, provides you credibility in the job market. If you're looking for a job, it can help a team um, from a private class setting of building shared language and understanding of terminology. And so we're really just trying to create a, a solid baseline here for 
um, not just the guide and what what we're you know creating that shared understanding around, but also in that assessment and being able to say we're all on the same page um, with our with our understanding and knowledge of Kanban. Um, the other goal here is the ability to help you understand where to focus. And so one of the things that we've been seeing with um, reviewing assessment results and looking through assessments is it helps us see where we can provide more, um, more education and more resources. So things like, you know, if we see that we're struggling with areas around flow metrics or specific topics from the assessments, it helps us see what the community needs more of. So whether that's webinars or blog posts or white papers, um, seeing, seeing where the certification may um, have holes in what we're providing, it helps us figure out how to offer more and offer more content to the community. Our number one priority in all of this is to help you learn though. Um, so the certification is great, but it's, it's really a tool for you to be able to um, understand where you're at in your Kanban learning and in your Kanban journey, and then help figure out what else you could learn um, to grow and improve, improve that score, whether it's the open assessment or the actual certification. Anything on this one, Dan? Yeah, uh, I actually, I just want to say a couple more things about the about the shared language. Um, this probably speaks a little bit more to the to to the guide than the assessment, although the assessment is very much based on, on the guide. Um, but I, I think it's important for people to know that our our purpose in in writing the guide uh, is not to come up with a prescriptive recipe for what is Kanban. That that's that really wasn't the point at all. It was really more about the the points that I think Colleen has just outlined here. Um, strip out all the, um, I don't want to say unnecessary, so let's say not necessary. Strip out all the not necessary bits, bits of Kanban and try to get it down to its, its absolute essence. You know, is there a minimal set of things that we as a community can all come together and agree on? Okay, this is Kanban and the terms that we're using here, this is Kanban because uh, Colleen alluded to this earlier. There's way too much energy, I think, that is invested in terms of you know, what, what do we call this and what, what is Kanban and all that stuff. So what we try to do is just really, really, really strip it down. Um, and so we, we really do want your feedback and, you know, on that, but, but making sure that people understand that um, just because it's not in the guide doesn't mean you can't, or you shouldn't do it. In fact, we've got a section in the guide that says, um, you know, what, what's in the guide represents the absolute minimum set of things that you need. Um, you can and probably should do a lot of other things. Um, so just because you're doing those, those other things doesn't mean you're necessarily doing it wrong, uh, but those other things may or may not be, be Kanban. That's, that's okay, that's, that's perfectly okay. Uh, but what we're, what we're just really trying to get to is what is, that, what is that absolute minimum core set so that we can all stop those meaningless debates on, do we call it cycle time? Do we call it lead time, which everybody knows um, I'm, I'm right on that position. You know, do we call it, you know, whatever, like, let's, let's, let's forget about that stuff. And let's really, really get down to the more, more important stuff, which is um, helping our customers succeed. And I think that's where um, our community can really shine too with this. Like, like Dan said, if we, if we're really open to um, blending different approaches and, and, and tools here with how we're using Kanban and, um, and with Scrum or, or with other, you know, other methods here, I think what can be really cool about this is sharing a lot more of those stories. And so one of the things that I've been really excited about already and feedback that we've had with the launch of ProConbon.org is people are saying they're so excited to see something that's not um, this versus something else. It's, the, it's this and everything else. And so I think the more we can hear from members of this community about how they're using that um, to complement other ways of working, that that will really help us tell an amazing story and, and continue to grow with this. All right, so why now? Why in the middle of <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic are we launching ProConbon.org? Um, what was really important to us here was was creating a safe space, and it and this will continue to be the you know at the core of what we're doing with everything um, ProConbon.org offers. So we really want this community to be free from sexual harassment, free from bullying. Um, free from worry that your contributions will be minimized, 
trivialized or outright stolen. So I have Dan's name in the bottom corner here, so he won't yell at me. But in, in all seriousness, um, our expectation here is that um, everybody do, do their best to support one another and honor each other's contributions um, to the community so that everybody feels um, safe to contribute here and safe to speak up. Um, you will see on ProConban.org, our code of conduct. It is a little bit longer than this. It's not massive. It's not a legal document, um, but at its core, it is don't be a jerk and be excellent to each other. Um, we also don't wanna be in a position of being parents or, or the social media police um, through this community either. So what we're hoping is that we can ask that everybody that join us um, in Slack or in, you know, in classes, um, and helping us build out resources that you will help us uphold this code of conduct too by calling out um, shitty behavior or <laughs> people being a jerk to one another so that um, we don't have to uh, police the, the police the community here. Anything you wanna to add to that, Dan? No, just, just, just a, a shout out to uh, Chris McDermott and you know, the original incarnation of Lean Natural Scotland for his inspiration and in, in putting together this kind of condensed um, a code of conduct and bringing to the forefront the, 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 the need to that. We've had, we've had several people from the community weigh in, uh, Cheryl Hammond, uh, Heidi Helfand, uh, Kat Swatel on, on uh, you know, why, uh, what, what should be in our code of conduct and, and why it's so important. So th thanks to all of them. And, uh, you know, as, as Colleen said, hopefully all of you can, can help us uh, evolve this as well. Jose, how are we doing? Do we have any questions coming in through chat? Nothing to date. Okay, great. All right, so how can you get involved? Um, join us in Slack. So Slack is gonna be our number one place for this community to communicate and interact with each other. We do have a link and maybe Jose, if you could drop that in chat for everybody too, so that they have access to it. I've got a link to it on the slide here and we can drop these slides and meet up as well. I don't know if the hyperlink will work that way though. Um, so we'll make sure that everybody has access to that invitation link to join us on Slack. Um, you'll see multiple different channels in Slack. We've got people interested in the trainer path, people interested in taking a course or maybe bringing a private course into their um, company. Um, there's also feedback on the Kanban guide in that. And then I think the other thing is, is figuring out how we can get involved in the community, um, maybe post COVID, but we're looking at things like sponsoring meetups, um, trying to figure out how we can offer education into the community and offer a space for some of these conversations. Um, so Slack will be the backbone for this. Um, so we invite all of you to join us in Slack. Um, but I think like we said with the code of conduct, we do expect everybody to be excellent to each other in that forum. You can challenge each other. You can ask any question of that group. Um, we don't have to agree, but we do have to be excellent to each other. So it is our expectation that everybody in that forum treat each other with, with respect. How can you get others involved? Um, so organize a meetup like this one or host a meetup. Um, you can even host internal meetups. We've done. Um, a few events where it's been like an internal organization or um, made maybe a community of practice for a company where they're interested in learning more about Kanban and we can come and talk about what we're doing with Pro Kanban or even a specific topic. Um, for a while, I did board teardowns, which was kind of fun of show me your board and I'll tell you what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, we can also do some overviews of flow metrics. Um, uh, Julia is hosting an Ask a Kanban Trainer next for this meetup, and that's another great way um, to get some voices from the Kanban community out there and sharing um, what we've got to offer. Um, another way to get new people involved is invite somebody who's not part of this group. Um, find somebody who you know might be interested in this or is um, really seeking something new for, that, for their career, for their team, for their company, and bring them. Um, I think we all have a tendency, we know, we know their, our network well, we know these groups really well, and um, there are a lot of amazing familiar faces, but we also want to get a lot of new faces um, in this conversation and in this community as well. Um, so don't just bring them, also amplify them. Let's figure out how to, to raise some people up. 
um, and help educate folks who or may not even have an opportunity to attend these classes. So let's do what we can to um, try to bring new voices in and, and give them some new opportunities to learn Kanban. Um, answer any questions and welcome all voices. So you will see like we've had, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the conversations we've had in, in Slack to date. Um, around different topics, but there's all levels of questions. There's people who are brand new and people who are asking for um, help with tools um, and very specific questions in tooling. So there's all different kinds of questions being posted there and we wanna be able to have conversations and welcome, welcome all of that to the table. Dan, anything to add here? No. Cool. All right, so, um, we, we've talked a lot about respecting each other. We're all new at this. We were all, we were all new at this once. Um, I found this photo, it's from a 10 year old classroom, but I thought it had a lot of great ideas in terms of um, saying, someone, saying something nice to someone, say hi to someone new, um, remind someone nicely of, your, of our community rules and values. Um, that's one that we'll ask everyone to do. Um, give up your seat. So thinking of giving up your seat, I know um, Dave West just did this for a speaking spot that he had for scrum.org um, where he gave up his seat and said he wanted to give his seat to somebody who may not have had a chance to um, otherwise speak. And so we wanna just keep thinking about all of these things that we can do to create um, a really strong sense of community and a really strong sense of supporting each other. Dan, what would you add for this one? Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't have, I, I don't really, I don't have, like I said, I think you're doing a great job. I'm, I'm excited to get to the questions and see what everybody else has. Yeah. Has okay. Well, let's run through kind of what's next on the schedule and then we'll open yeah. this up. Um, in terms of classes, so if you go to prokanban.org, you will see that we have classes coming up as early as November 30th with Julia. Um, John Coleman has a couple classes in December and then January and Jose and JP have classes um, early in March. So if you're interested in taking any of these classes, please go check them out. Um, also use the resources that are listed on the site. Read the guide, read it twice before you take the assessment or Dan will make fun of you. Just kidding, he won't. But um, there, the guide is a great tool for getting started with that assessment. So read through it a couple times um, before, you, before you pay for any kind of certification assessment. And then leverage those resources. There's a lot of great writing there, links to blogs um, and other papers where you can explore things and maybe learn some, learn some new um, tools or tricks for, for Kanban at your organization. And then next up, like we said, is Ask a Trainer with Julia. And that'll be um, on Monday, same time, same group. Um, so if you're interested in learning more from Julia about what she's going to be working on as a, a official trainer for Pro Kanban, you can ask her more questions there. So like um, Dan said, let's open this up. Let's hear from you guys. Um, what questions do you have? What you're interested in? What you feel like the community needs? So, yeah, so there was, there was one thing, a couple of things in the chat that I wanted to, um, uh, that I wanted to address because it looks like there was some discussion about uh, a lot of you have a KMP certification. Why do you need another one? Uh, in full honesty and full transparency, the short answer is you don't. Right, <laughs> you really don't need another certification. Probably, um, this is as Colleen just said. This is just an opportunity for you to to ass assess your knowledge, um, given hopefully what you know what the community has, has coalesced mm -hmm. around. Um, but this is definitely not about you know cert certificate chasing or you know badge collection or or anything like that. So you you you, you really don't don't have to. Um, I I could say something facetious about I'm sorry that you got your KMP, but I won't say that. Um, and then the, the other thing, Colleen, I don't know, I don't know if, if we mentioned, and we should probably be transparent about this too. When we talk about the, um, the path to becoming a, a trainer, uh, Colleen said, we're, we're, we're trying to be conscientious of, of, of not flooding the market, as she mentioned, uh, but we're also upfront, you know, emphasizing diversity as much as possible. That's geographic diversity, that's trainer diversity, that's knowledge diversity, it's, 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 it's everything. So if, if you've maybe reached out to us and said, hey, I'm interested in, in becoming a trainer um, and we're maybe a little bit slow to, you know, on the uptake on that, that's, that's really why. It's not, it's not that you're, you're not awesome and it's not that we don't value your participation and it's not that we don't want you part of the community. 
it's just, I think we have to be, at least up front anyway, we have to be very, very, very careful about not launching, as Colleen said, with, you know, 100 trainers or 200 trainers, you know, right, right out the door until we've really kind of proved, uh, proved the market and proved that we, we can actually do this. So, um, so just please, please, we, we, we appreciate your, your patience and, and please bear with us. We're, we're, we're trying to give everybody as much personal attention as possible because we really do value your contribution. And we're really so glad we, we've, quite frankly, been overwhelmed by the response in terms of the trainers who have reached out to us. Um, so um, I just want to make sure that, that that's out there. If you, if, you, if you haven't seen much progress, that's, that's why. And so our apologies, and I, I, I promise we'll get you as quickly as possible, as quickly as we can. Yeah, and I think the other thing, I mean, this isn't this isn't specific to a KMP course, but you know, in the industry in general, I think there's a handful of courses where you can take a course and you know, I've taught these courses where people drop out halfway through or leave leave the room for um, an hour to go to the bathroom and never come back and still walk out of that class with a certification. And so I think what we're really trying to do with the exam too is is validate that learning um, and create and create a you know a way to show that you understand everything that was presented in the class so that this isn't about you know for for lack of a better way of putting it like buying your certification. Um, so we're really trying to create that validated, validated learning credential as well. Okay, so if we're going to go into Q and A, got two options. One is please type your questions in the chat, and we'll try to pick them up and and, and read them out. But you can also mute yourself and ask your question verbally. In order to facilitate that, please, um, if you go to the participants window, you have the icon to say raise hand. So please let us like manage like who, who will speak less yet. Next. Um, <laughs> so if you can go to the participants button, don't they? If you can go to the participants button, um, participants area, and then uh, raise your hand, that would be great. Uh, otherwise, questions, any questions, any, any, any thoughts, any sharing, any feedback? for these two. Okay, so we got a question here in, in, in thank you, Marcel. Um, we have a question in, in the chat, okay. What's the difference between, in, what's the difference in pro-Kanban thinking, not speaking about certification? So what's different in pro-Kanban pro thinking? So, so Henrik, would you, would you? Thank you. Oh, sorry. Henry. I was just gonna ask for a little bit more clarification. I don't know, mm -hmm. Colleen, do you, have an, do you have an answer already? I was just. No, let's hear from Henrik. Yeah, I know, yeah, Henrik, if you can maybe unmute yourself and say a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. So uh, you, you just, you know, spend quite a lot of time talking about the certification and the assessments and whatnot, but uh, talking into the thinking about Kanban, what, what's the main difference in, for instance, uh, at the KMP and whatnot? I, I didn't read the guides yet or whatnot. I'm just, you know, jumping in here. So, uh, so what's, what's the different thinking? I guess there's some, some kind of different thinking. And you, you said something about, should it be lead time? Should it be cycle time? And I mean, that's not, you know, for me, that's not really a difference. It's not. It's just, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Colleen, were you going to say something about that? Yeah, I was going to say, in, in, in my opinion, I think one of the biggest differences I see in this is, is that it's not prescriptive. There's not a lot of rules and um, there's not a lot of things that you're going to see in the guide where you're doing things wrong or there is there, these are the must haves or, or it's not Kanban. Um, you know, I think there's some, some ideas that we have around things that you measure and things that you should be doing and having conversations that you have with your team. Um, but it's not really prescriptive in the in the sense that there's um, this handbook of of laws <laughs> that you have to be following. Yeah, and, and and from 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 my perspective, all of that and um, the 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 kanban, the way the pro kanban talks about it, really to me is is more about uh, is really more of a focus on flow, right? What is flow? How do you achieve flow? How do you improve your results using flow? It's not, it's not a change management methodology. It's not a methodology at all, but it's not specifically a change management methodology. It's really more about how do we understand flow um, to, get, to get better results by using flow. So when you read the Kanban guide, you could very, in my humble opinion, you could very, very easily substitute flow for Kanban in pretty much every part of the guide. And um, you, you'd be doing really, really well. You'd, you'd probably understand you know, potentially better. Um, there's a, there's a philosophical debate, um, and, and maybe this is better about alcohol too. In many ways, Kanban is a terrible word for what we're doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's terrible, terrible marketing. Um, but 
but it is what it is and it's what the industry has accepted. So that's, I think that's why, why we're going with it. But to me, that's, that's the big, the big thinking is it's, it's really centered around this idea of flow. Okay. Thank you. No, great question. Thanks. If I, if I can add one, if I can add one thing here, because um, I, I've been doing Kanban training and coaching for eight years now. Um, and one thing that I really like when I read the guide for the first time, or the latest version of the guide in particular, is that it really, really captures the essence of what is actionable Kanban. So I've been, I've been doing a lot of training and coaching and many times like the, the enablement of teams to start really getting flow into their environments is really well captured. There are three simple practices. It's all about yeah, the visualization, managing flow, active management of flow, the metrics to help us make decisions, all those things. And, and, and that's a great start for most organizations, teams, organizations, whatever. Yeah. So I, I found it really, really compelling message to say, like, if you want to start with flow, this is the minimum. And from here, hey, keep going. Uh, and that, that's, that's the most persuasive aspect of what, what I think that guide. How long is it? Is it 10 pages? Not, not even. I think the meat of the guide is probably somewhere around eight. Okay. Um, so in, in eight pages, is capturing this thing. I mean, obviously, um, experiencing what it is is different. I mean, it's, it's very concisely written, but obviously it's not that straightforward to actually making it happen. But if you want actionable essence of Kanban, got it, eight pages. Sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> I saw a really, uh, it was an interesting question somewhere. Um, um, Benjamin, you did say as a comment, like I find that the three pro Kanban practices are very easy and straightforward to explain to people. Would you like to add something to that? Benjamin or? Uh, no, nothing, just, uh, just that comment really. I, I find it kind of easier and straightforward. If, you know, three is a, a simple number for people to remember. I think if you get beyond that, you start forgetting things real quick. Um, and, and it's all just very intuitive. It's, 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 very, it's very straightforward. It makes sense. You know, you don't have to memorize each word. It's just three things to keep in mind. Um, so even, even, I don't know, I'm trying to avoid the whole compare and contrast thing, but I've been thinking like six practices and six principles. It's just the, like, you know, half that's going to kind of fall by the wayside, at least initially. So um, I, I really appreciate the, the three. Um, and I think it's, it's just a really basic structure that people can constantly refer back to. Yeah, no, I, 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 I very much appreciate that comment. Um, yeah, we, we, we definitely wanted to get away from the, hey, you know, if, if three practices are good, six must be better, right? And it's, you know, with, with, each, with each release of the guide, it's like now with 50% more practices, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I think, I think a lot of frameworks and methodologies suffer from, from that bloat. Um, and, and it really is, you know, trying, trying to get back to that, that KISS principle um, as much as possible. Good. I saw Claire uh, asked a question too here about um, geographic locations of trainers. Mm -hmm. We can jump over to that one for a moment. And we are trying to be thoughtful. Um, we, we recruited some trainers in um, Africa and we've been working with folks in Europe and US. Um, I think that's the most, most folks right now are from, um, from UK and, and the US. Um, and in terms of minimum experience and knowledge, we're looking for a score of 95% or higher on that assessment. So higher than the 85% passing score. Um, and then if you are interested in that, we'll kick off conversations. Even if you don't hit 95%, we'll work with you and talk to you about what you missed and review those questions with you um, and partner you up with different um, existing trainers so that we can help you um, get your score up and help you understand what areas you just need to beef up your knowledge on um, to get through that process. Um, we're adding, we're kind of adding new steps as we learn too. So we're, we're working on adding in trainer interviews um, and opportunities to either sit in courses or train the trainer style courses where you can walk through the materials with some of the trainers that have already taught the class. Um, so Claire, feel free if you if you're interested, you can ping me on Slack directly. Um, there's also a trainer inquiries channel where you can find out more info on that process. Yeah, and, 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 and please, please, please don't. Uh... Don't think that you you don't have enough knowledge to um, to, to reach out to us because because um, we, we recognize that there are, there are a lot of people out there that just really haven't had the opportunity to uh, you know apply Kanban um, and so that's why we're, we're 
we're not saying, oh, you have to have 10 years of experience in combat. Well, you know, that, that would limit us to maybe three people. Um, so it's like, it's, it's really, it's really about us getting awesome people involved. And obviously all of you are awesome. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll work with you on your experience. We'll work with you on your knowledge. You know, we, we, we like I said, our, our, our aim is to, to build a great community. So please don't feel like, oh, I don't, I just, I've never done Kanban or I don't know enough about it. Um, we, we will do what we can to, God, I almost said make Kanban great again, but I don't want to say that. So never mind. Okay. I didn't say that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, we, um, we got the first person with a raised hand. So uh, Dylan, would you like to? Yeah. Hi there, guys. Um, yeah. I haven't read the guide either yet, um, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like um, there's, there's three practices to find. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry if this, I don't even know how to ask this question. I'm sorry if it's a stupid question, but from, from like Kanban, there's, there's, there's more than three practices, you know, from what I've learned and there's, there's other principles in that. So, I mean, are they like a summary of those? Are they different? Is that going to cause confusion? If my thinking's right, that pro Kanban's got practices and Kanban's got different practices. So I don't know if this is making sense. Yeah, it, it, it is. Colleen, do you want to do that? Or do you want to take want me to take that? You go ahead. <laughs> She's going to let me step on all the landmines. Okay, thanks, Colleen. <laughs> um, we have to be careful. We, we have to be careful between um, what we call Kanban and what is generally known as the Kanban methodology. Unfortunately, a lot of people use the word Kanban when what they really mean is the Kanban methodology, which is a very, very, very specific approach to change management that is delivered by you know, a certain organization out there. Um, we, we talk, like I said, when we talk about Kanban, we're talking about flow, like it's, 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 it's essence. So, I mean, I guess to directly answer your question, I, it, would, it would technically be a subset of maybe all the other things that you've heard about Kanban, but I think the, the argument could be made a lot of the stuff that people associate with Kanban really has nothing to do with Kanban. Not, not that it's necessarily bad, don't get me wrong, not that those things aren't necessarily, you know, that you shouldn't be doing them, but they're not necessarily Kanban. Um, and, and so I guess that's, that's, that's really been our approach is, what is the absolute, absolute, absolute minimum stuff that we, that we can call Kanban? So separating out Kanban, the, you know, the flow strategy from Kanban, the Kanban methodology, which is a, a change management approach, really. Go ahead, please. Like, somebody, somebody help me because I'm flailing. Please, Julia, please. Yeah, go. <laughs> no, I just, I wanted to say, because I mean, I learned um, the, the first way I ever learned about Kanban was through learning the Kanban method. And um, I mean, that served me really well. I think when we're thinking about what the difference is between these two, we're not trying to come up with a different definition of Kanban, like Dan said. It really is, if we go back to this guide uh, is a simplified version of what Kanban is. It's taking everything down to the bare minimums. So that's, you know, Jose in the chat put, you know, the three practices down and those are practices that are generally in the other practices in the Kanban method. But we're leaving out things like assuming that you always must start where you are or assuming that you're going to, you know, uh, so evolutionary, change. Mental evolutionary change, right, Dan, you can pick it up from here. <laughs> oh, no, here, you keep going. You keep going. No, I, I wanted to get you to hear because <laughs> you've talked about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I, I agree. I was, I was, I was, I was trying really hard not to do a direct compare and contrast because that's really not, not what this is about. Well, I mean, uh, Dylan, are, are, was, we, are we helping at all? I don't know. I don't the know. question was about the differences. I think it, yeah. it helps to call them out specifically. So those, the, the few things that are left out, they're not left out because they're bad or they're wrong. It's that those may be great for your context. And so they're complementary things that you can add based on your context. Um, so what we're trying to codify is the framework, the immutable framework and then you can build on top of that with whatever bits you need. Yeah, I mean, that, that, helped, that helped a lot. And my, my intention of the question wasn't about comparison. It was actually probably more along the lines of, do you not foresee this potentially causing confusion? Because I think anybody looking at like the title, they're just going to assume Kanban is Kanban and not get the difference between one specifically around flow, you know, what's the minimum that you need versus the other one's a method. And yeah. that's, that's all I really wanted to point out. 
It, Go ahead. Can I add something? Because if you if you look at the three practices that you have in Kanban, it actually um, it's, it's it's again it's it's a simplification and it's collating whatever it might be in Kanban method, for example, into three simple ones. Um, Kanban method, for example, talks about policies. Policies are potentially part in, of your definition of workflow, which is the practice that we have, we have in from Kanban. So it's not like it's neg because they are not there; they are negating them. It's they have been express and communicated maybe in different ways. Um, what Julia was saying there as well is like some of these things that we, we have seen in Kanban, yeah, or we use in Kanban, they're not necessarily universally applicable all the time. It will be your context might determine that. Evolutionary change is not always the right answer. Uh, starting where you are now is not always the right answer. I mean, those are not practices, those are principles, by the way. So, but they're not always potentially applicable. You might be controlling WIP without actually applying WIP limits. Yeah. So if you want to go to the absolute minimum, some of those things are very, very common, but not necessarily, you know, they don't necessarily have to be there all the time. And I've seen many, many teams who have been brilliant at doing Kanban where they might not have those things. I stop there. <laughs> well said. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, will yeah, will, will, will there be confusion? Probably. There, 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 there probably will be. Um, uh, um, I don't know what else to, to say about that again without getting myself into trouble. So I have a very backlog, long backlog of questions, options here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to select as I'm gonna go. There was one that I really I really uh, would like to pick up. Is like, um, uh, thank you, Anjali. Is uh, is there any significance to the pro part of pro kanban? Yeah, uh, uh, Colleen, you or me? Well, I was going to say, I, mean, I think I think there's two parts to it in my mind. The mm -hmm. the um, application, I think, first of all, and and how you can use Kanban where you work, whether you know, and I and I think somebody mentioned in the thread here that it's not necessarily IT specific, right? It can be HR or marketing or any you know any part of of your organization where you can improve flow. Um, and then I think the other part is in the community, right? So it's professional in, in how we bring, bring Kanban with us, but it's also professionalism in how we treat each other inside this community. So I think in my mind, there's two parts to the, the, the name Pro Kanban. Um, and, and the latter to me is the one that's the most important. And are those two, uh, do they feature in the Kanban guide and in the training that's offered? I don't think there's a specific call out to that in the guide. Somebody yeah, else so correct me if I'm wrong there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the so in the guide itself, there is no there is no mention of professionalism in the APK class, which is applying professional Kanban. There is. We talk a lot about what it is um, to practice Kanban professionally, you know, it, 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 if you will. So 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 yeah, that's the the the, the, the pro piece of pro Kanban is um, what what does it mean. You know, to take kind of taking a professional attitude toward uh, toward the application of, of Kanban. Um, Thank you. We we had another question, but you know, probably just a bit of trivial information. Why why Pro Kanban and not um, something like uh, Flow Pro or Pro Flow or something like that? I'll tell. I'll I'll share a story here. Or I something um, better. at one point <laughs> tried to register a new business. Um, for coaching and training Kanban teams. And I called it Amplified Flow, which I thought was very witty and creative until my husband told me it sounded like a high powered toilet. Um, so I think <laughs> we also have to stick with what people are searching for a little bit here. And if they're looking for Kanban as, an, as a new way to, uh, to bring in what their teams are already doing or learning, we have to stay a little bit in our lane <laughs> yeah. so they can find us. And I, I also think this this aspect of professionalism. I think that's ultimately what's going to be uni what's going to unite us when we talk about building bridges to all of these other communities. I think it's that professionalism aspect that is going to be that that build that we bridge. You know, how do you practice Scrum professionally? How do you practice Safe professionally? How do you practice some of these other things professionally? But there's that to, that to me is going to be kind of the the common thread that runs through everything. Um, so th to me, that's why I like I like the emphasis on on professionalism mm -hmm. okay great um i think we have a uh, cornelius would like to have a question he was trying to raise his hand cornelius could you unmute yourself and ask a question 
Yeah, so probably delve a little bit into the details. I'm, <clears throat> I'm a big <clears throat> fan about learning. It's kind of one of my principles in life that guides me is to always learn something and um, number two, have fun while I'm doing it. Um, I'm trying to I, I'm trying to read the guide as you just posted now, but the questions in my mind is when when I've introduced um, people to Kanban in the work environments, um, I've never really always followed the official Kanban method itself, but I always started with let's just simply visualize the workflow, you know, the stages from beginning till end, or from when the idea comes up that it goes through the whole cooker until getting our customer has it. And then once we visualize that, because the magic is the visualization for me, that it's visible, because when we see it, we can talk about it, and we can discuss and understand it. Um, so once we've got that, then we have to do a couple of key things, which is to limit the work in progress. Why do we do that? So we can start changing and tweaking things to understand where we can improve you know, the work we do. Um, and then the last one, so, so, and, and, and the last one is then to try and just improve that process. So... Um, how is what you're bringing in either adding or, or, or um, simplifying that is the question. Does that make sense, my question? So th this is kind of what Kanban sat in my mind is those three things um, originally. And as part of my learning, what is um, what can I learn from Pro Kanban to use going forward? I think it sounds like you have a great foundation here. I mean, I think the way you you summarize that, you boiled it down to what we're, exactly what we're trying to focus on and, and simplify with this and kind of step away from all of the, the, the kind of other rules that you mentioned and just focus on that, um, the workflow and the flow of value. Um, I would say some of the other things that you could expect to learn in the course itself um, would be more focused around flow metrics and what are the most important things that you can measure and be tracking for a team to help to help keep that focus on flow and the movement of, of value. Um, but I think you summarized it really well. I mean, I think what the, well, that's exactly what we're trying to do is strip away some of those things that can help you but aren't required. Yeah, yeah I mean, if, 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 you, if you just swapped your I think it was your second point, the limiting work in progress with the active management of items in progress. Yeah. What you said is exactly what we're talking about. Um, and this yeah. is going to sound like heresy to everybody on the call, but you can achieve flow. You can achieve flow without limiting work in progress. It turns out limiting whip is the by far and away best way to do it, but you yeah. can achieve flow without it. Um, and, and that we, we put a much, I would, well, maybe, maybe I say we, the Royal, we, me, me, um, I put a much higher emphasis on like focusing on age of items rather than necessarily controlling work, uh, controlling work in progress. I think that's a much more powerful way to get to, but, but I mean, I, my point is we're in violent agreement. I mean, if, if you were just swap that uh, language. Uh, absolutely. The way I always yeah. saw the limiting work in progress is not the, the, that mechanism itself, but the activities around it. Yeah. Um, it's the activities by us trying to look at what is either enabling what we're looking at to go faster or slower so the analogy that um, I got an example years ago is imagine you've got these little tubs of water and if there's a problem, there's something in the water that you can't see is slowing the flow of water from one tub to the other. But if you reduce it, you might see that there's a, a, a blockage there. And that's mm -hmm. really, it's, it's a tool, but effectively it's, what you're trying to do is manage or as you would use the word manage, but try and understand what you can do to increase or um, speed up or slow down um, the flow from beginning to end or from idea to customers using something. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, there is another question. Uh, Dale Matthews, would you like to ask your question or do you want to mute yourself? Uh, hi. Yeah. I, I'm kind of, I was kind of going in a similar direction, I think to Cornelius. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm in, in violent agreement in, in many ways. Um, my question was really about why, why Kanban, you know, why use the term Kanban? Uh, and I understand the sort of thing, you want to anchor it somewhere, you know, so people people at least coming at it thinking it's about this and not about sewage. That, <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense. 
but my you know this is where i think i'm in the same similar place to to cornelius because people get really hung up on saying well we are going to do kanban or we are going to do scrum or we are we are doing safe and you know they feel it, it kind of boxes teams into a, a particular way to do it i really like the three the you know the three basic principles because this this is what it's about you know how can we get how can we get the work through and done you know good quality without killing the team you know and, and that's all that matters and and whether it's 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 from you know come come straight out of um you know the the kanban uh, David Anderson's book or, or, or from Ken Schwaber or from just making it up. If I wander into a team and say, wouldn't it be a good idea if we wrote down somewhere how we want to work, you know, and that turns out to be the same as the policy as described in the, you know, Kanban training I've done, you know, does it, does it have to be Kanban? I think the answer is no. I mean, it doesn't, but it, I, I also would like to lean on um, Dan a little bit here to talk about maybe the origin of, of Kanban a little without going into too much detail. I mean, I think that that's the other piece that's kind of important in, in what we're trying to do too in respecting people's contributions and background and experience here that um, at its core that the, what we know as the Kanban method now might be slightly different than what it was in its original incarnation. And um, changed to some extent. And I think um, Dan, I'll lean on you here, but we're trying to get back to that core, um, core, core origination of what this was and, and how simple it can be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just by, and, and this is just my, my own personal frustration. So I'll apologize if this, if, if it shines through a little bit too much, but um, that original team that I was on that, you know, that, that, you know, the stuff that we did came to be known as, as Kanban, what we, what we at the time called as Kanban, looks almost nothing like what the world right now, I think, understands as Kanban. It has been, and I use this word, I think people get angry when I use this word, but I really mean it. it Kanban has been perverted over time, you know, away from, from, its, from its original intention. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's, for me personally, that's why Kanban, because when I read the guide, when I read the guide that we wrote, that's Kanban to me, you know? Um, and, like I said, like th there was, as you can imagine, when we, when we were getting the community together, Jose can probably speak about this. Colleen can speak about this. There was a lot of debate around what, we, what do we call this thing? Should, should we actually use the Kanban word? You know, because obviously you can see even on this call, I think there, there's going to be, be some confusion. Uh, and unfortunately, I think that that train had sailed, right? And so we were kind of stuck with, yes, I said that right. Did anybody pick that up? No, we laughed. I didn't see anybody laugh. The train had sailed. No. All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> That it was kind of out there in, you know, in our com common parlance. So I think we were kind of stuck with it. And that's, that, that's honestly the biggest reason I think why we're calling it Kanban is just because it's, it's this albatross around our neck that I think I don't know that we can do anything much about. I'd love to call it something else, but that's, yeah. Any, anything with flow sounds a bit, <laughs> I guess that sounds more like sewage than process, you know, I, don't know. I wish. I, I'd be open. I mean, if anybody has better ideas, I'd be open for for for, for different thoughts. But we're probably we probably are just too too far down the oh, track. Right. I don't I don't have anything better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look like Simon had a hand up. Simon, do you want to unmute? And yes. Can I just a quick question? Um, if um, one thing that we're gonna put on chat later is like, if you want to find out a little bit more about this history about how can bug happen, uh, we'll share the link to the session that Dan did about the the secret history of Kanban. At lag twenty, it's in our in our um, YouTube channel, but we'll put the link on the on the chat in a minute. Okay. Um, so, oh, there you are. I might just put it on the chat. Um, Simon, all yours. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so, my question is very much about the community. Um, before I say anything, I just want to declare an interest. I do work for a company that makes community software. I'm absolutely not representing them, um, but just just for trust, I want people to know that. That's fine. Um, so. I'm just wondering how, like, do you have ideas on how to make the community really as open as possible to people who wouldn't necessarily find it? Because I think with word of mouth, we're still very much in our bubble and the extended bubble. And if you compare scrum.org, for example, it's on a web page. So there are plenty of times I've come across people who said, oh yeah, I've seen that thing written on scrum.org's forum. And they're, they're not the people who would probably come to a website and then click into a Slack community, I think. 
I, this is a fantastic question and one that I, I'm really passionate about. I mean, I think getting new voices and new people and, and making this group um, d as diverse as possible has to be very deliberate and intentional. It's not going to happen on its own. It's not going to happen from people Googling how to become a Kanban trainer, <laughs> like you said. So I think we all have to go out of our way to try to bring different people to this community. And it, it has to be all of it has to be on our shoulders. Right? right? To go out and say, I have an opportunity to help you either learn how to, how to use Kanban, how to become a trainer, how to participate in this community so you can learn more, but it has to be deliberate or it always looks the same. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's one of the things that had me so excited about this group and about what we're trying to do with the community part of this is um, having an opportunity to do that, right? And to be able to go reach out to people who may have felt like they couldn't get in couldn't get in to a different community um, or didn't have an opportunity there and, and feeling like I can go now and reach out to them and invite them to participate in this, whatever that looks like for them. But um, my, my feeling is that has to be very deliberate to, to change anything and to not have all the same faces, like you said, that are, that are always present. Any of the other trainers or folks I thought I saw John on too, or Jose, Julia, would you guys add anything to that? Uh, I was doing admin at the moment, so <laughs> looking at questions, so I'm totally out of this. Sorry, <laughs> I declare that, sorry. Yeah, and we certainly welcome ideas for, for, making, yeah. for making this more inclusive. Uh, more, more diverse, you know, we, we mm -hmm. last thing, I, you're right. The last thing we want is an echo chamber, you know? So how do we, um, how do we get these new voices? Um, uh, I, actually, when we started the conversation before I, I, I was doing the admin, one thing that really struck, um, I think Kanban, and if someone, so I was looking for a comment and I kind of find it now, is we can take Kanban a lot, the non-IT conversations, non-IT language as well. Kanban, flow management, flow thinking, way beyond IT. In many, many, many areas of many businesses, there is there are teams and organizational units and so on, which are screaming for something like Kanban as well. And, and there, there are communities that probably are still underserved um, by what we could potentially offer, yeah? So this community, I mean, the, 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 what, what Kanban could help to businesses could be much, much, much bigger, much, much more impactful than it is even today. And, and, and it's made, you know, it has made a huge difference to many, many organizations, but it could be even more. So I think, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm connected to what you're saying, Simon, because I think that there is, there is, a, there is a lot of people out there that, could, that we could all benefit from what we're doing at Kamba. So I remember. <laughs> Someone else? I'm feeling uncomfortable now. <laughs> I was just, I was just scrolling through the chat to see if there was something. Does it, does somebody put something in the chat? Because it's it's zooming by so quickly. Zooming by so quickly. Mm, no, we don't have anything. Um, Andy, you you said a comment about more accessible. Uh, Andy House, what do you mean? Uh, oh, I was just listening to um, uh, yeah. the kind of the sharing of this whole community spirit thing and. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Kanban for a long time for me was this kind of uh, thing over here, <laughs> right? And it was it was staffed by people who really, really, truly kind of, it was almost nerdy and geeky. Um, mm. uh, sorry for the people who've been dealing with it much, much longer. Um, uh, but, uh, but the kind of the spirit of this community feels very much more like we're trying to open it up to be more accessible for people who are uh, new to working in an agile way and actually new to exploring better ways of working. And actually, you know, that whole, um, was it Cornelius was saying, you know, the, the thing, God, you reminded me of the kind of the early work I used to do, which is like the first thing is rock up to, to a team and go, right, you know, what does it look like? How are we working? Um, you know, and, and it's, for me, it's trying to capture those people and then kind of, and say, look, you know, you're doing the right thing and, and you're doing the right thing. And then here's some more stuff. And, and, and that for me is what I hope this community can build and it becomes less kind of like, uh, we can still be nerdy, <laughs> you know, we can still be nerdy and geeky, but, but it's actually um, helping those people who, who are just exploring these things and potentially make uh, worry. 
Um, uh, if there are any Australians, you'll know what I'm talking about when I say tall poppy syndrome. I, it's something I discovered this week, um, which is about kind of like saying, you know, I'm really good at something. I've discovered something and everybody not knocking them down. Um, and that, that, that when Kalim was talking, when Daniel was talking, uh, that really kind of hit me with, you know, I think it's that you know, trying to trying to bring those people along, not just say, oh, yeah, no, you know nothing. Thank you, Andy. I think that that was perfect. Cool. I am I am mindful about the time, um, so I wanted to say, like Colleen or Dan, um, would you like to have any any closing thoughts about this, um, or anybody else, quickly? Definitely. I mean, I, I think the big thing in my mind is is what Andy's saying, what Simon brought up. Find somebody, seek somebody out, and bring somebody along with you. Um, do it. Do it as soon as you're done with this call. Or do it first thing tomorrow morning. Um, get somebody else involved in this, even if it's just inviting them to Slack. And um, let's all be thinking about ways we can get more people. We can, we can be more accessible in the community or more findable, a more findable resource for folks. Um, and if that's meetups um, or what, whatever things, tools we can use in this virtual world um, to help talk about how uh, we can help teams with flow and help organizations with flow and not talk about sewage. Sorry for that. You guys are gonna <laughs> all have that stuck in your head now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's let's um, make this accessible and open and, and um, welcoming for everyone and, and join the conversation in Slack. Um, we can set up another channel too around um, community building and, and focus some of these ideas in that channel. So I'd like to hear more about si Simon. It was great, great, great to initiate that talk as well. Yeah. Um, Cornelius, you have a right hand. Would you like to? Here we are. <clears throat> So kind of just two thoughts really. Um, would the community would we do it through these kind of meetups or in the community? Um, possible things um, like anybody can bring a problem and then we we do an exercise to take them through that problem. Um, let me come up with an example. We're we're a film studio and we don't really know how we could use Kanban, you know, and then we could do like a physical exercise um, with a virtual board uh, and talk through certain questions to understand, okay, right, let's visualize what you're doing. And maybe do those kind of exercises. I think that will bring it to life to a lot of people that don't know what it's about. Um, make it a little bit less geeky as, as Andy said, <laughs> to show that it's not just within the development spaces, but it could be used anywhere. Um, anywhere that you want to kind of improve things to go from A to B. Okay. I love that idea. I don't think I'm going to let Andy take the geekiness out of this for me. I, I wear that badge with honor. But, <laughs> um, I think, you know, I think that's a cool idea too. I was telling Dan this morning when, when um, quarantine first started, I had my kids working with the Kanban board in the dining room so that I can make sure they got through all of their activities and didn't pick up a screen until they were through with everything. And I think there's lots of opportunities for us to think about how to apply these, these ideas to things outside of IT. So um, and that's another, you know, another great opportunity for, for folks on this call and in this community to contribute um, experiences and stories. I don't, so I don't, I don't know if it was Carl Scotland. I was attributed to him. I don't know if he was the one who came up with this, but it's, it's, he was the one I heard it from first. But very, very early on, I mean, almost, almost from the very beginning in Kanban, there was this concept of, of keep Kanban weird. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Carl was a big, big champion of that. Um, and that we've gotten away from that. I mean, it's, it's more... Uh, again, I'll, I'll maybe stay away from the color commentary, um, but I don't think we are keeping Kanban weird, and I, I think this is an opportunity to do that. There's, there's so many other applications, you know, as as Andy said, there's so so many ways, so many more ways to make it accessible to people. So let's do it. I mean, obviously, Colleen, Jose, Julia, all of us, John, all of us don't have, you know, all the answers, which is why we're reaching out to all of you. Whatever ideas you have, we we want to hear from you. This is because this is wonderful. And I think, how do we bring it then to you guys? Sorry, and then I'll keep quiet. <laughs> go, go, how do we go. initiate this? Slack is going to be the best place. And I think yeah. it gives us, you know, in terms of, of keeping things accessible is going to give everybody an opportunity to participate. I'd encourage that probably more than emailing us directly. 
because then we get other feedback, right? So if it's in Slack, other people can see it, other people can chime in and share stories and figure out how to organize around some of these efforts. Um, I think, you know, we've got, a, we, like I mentioned, we were trying to kick off a community group to organize different ideas to engage the community for any of these efforts. I think whether it's gathering stories, I saw some, um, James posted some questions around um, mentoring. We could set up a channel for, um, people looking for a mentor and people willing to be a mentor. So um, I would say Slack is gonna be our hub for all of this because it's gonna have the most eyes and the most, um, the, you know, the greatest ability to reach people. Thank you. Oh. Slack it is. Oh, yeah, it's, it's at least for now. So, I mean, this is obviously not the end. This is the beginning of the continuation of the conversation, the community formation. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone for being here. Uh, today, I uh, thank you to Colin and Dan for their time. And next session, it's is a Monday. It's only a few days away. So we have uh, Julia here, Julia Wester, um, and we're going to do a and uh, you know as as a Kanban trainer, ask me anything. So it's going to be an informal questions and answers, experiences, whatever it is. Let's let's you know. Uh, um, she has a lot of experience, and a lot of great insights to offer. So um, I'm not upping you up. Julia, you're great. <laughs> so <laughs> next Monday, um, we we'll have yeah, we're us together. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be there for you, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll contribute yeah. occasionally. Yeah, and um, so uh, and also, um, it's not on the meetup group yet. Um, uh, I will be putting both in the Lineage London and the Program Band groups, but on the 16th of December, so a, a month after Julia's. Um, we have just managed to convince John Coleman, who is also here, but he's not, I don't know, he's, he's here, but muted. Um, but John Coleman is another Kanban trainer and he will be doing another session. Here you are. Um, John is the, the co-author of the Kanban guide alongside with Dan. So we have like Julia, lots of lots of good stuff, actionable agile questions as well, if you want to do metrics, all those things. And then a month later, we have John um, also doing any questions. And we'll try to do this kind of like uh, regular, Q and A's, um, hopefully on a monthly basis or so. So with different people and, and regular stuff. So thank you very much. We are at the beginning of this journey and you know, maybe we have like some good stuff happening in 2020, this decade long year. Um, yeah, th thanks for everybody for showing up. I mean, this is, this is, this is wonderful for, for our first shout out. Um, take, taking time out of your evening to come talk about process. Who, who'd have thunk it? So thank, thank you so, so, so much for, for the passion. And we look forward to working with all of you um, in, in the future going forward. And we'll put the video on the YouTube, YouTube channel as soon as we can. And we'll also share it on the Slack. So thank you. Thanks, everybody.